Hey and welcome to the Daily Manchester United News. Let's begin with our daily news. Eric Ten Hag hits out at referee Anthony Tyler. After Man United draw versus Southampton, Manchester United manager Eric Ten Hag has said that referee Anthony Tyler had a huge influence on the goalless Premier League draw against Southampton on Sunday. The Red Devils were much fancier to beat the Suns at Old Trafford, but they were handed a nearly disadvantage after Casimiro was handed his second red card of the season. Tyler initially brandished a yellow card for the incident, but gave the marching orders to the Brazilian after he was asked to review the footage by the video assistant referee. Meanwhile, United were also denied a clear-cut penalty before the interval. Armer Bella Kotschap clearly protected the ball in the box with his hand but he was not penalized. Speaking after the game, Ten Hag said that the club will handle Casimiro's unfair sending off, but added that the result was influenced by the referee with a couple of dubious decisions. He told ManUnited.com, That is not the issue. We will deal with that. The issue is that this game was influenced by the referee. No, I said what I said. That is the refereeing is influencing the game, and we talk about two issues. United remain in a strong position to qualify for next season's Champions League, but losing two points at home to Southampton could prove costly in the long run. In our opinion, the Red Devils could have easily been in the winning side. Casimiro clearly got the ball before the man, and a yellow card would have been a fair decision. Just 24 hours earlier, we saw Leicester City's Ricardo Pereira avoid a booking for a similar challenge against Chelsea, which leads to a debate over VAR's inconsistency. Meanwhile, United should have at least one penalty in the game. Bella Kotschap clearly handled the ball, and right towards the end, the Suns should have been punished again. Marcus Rashford initially looked to have tripped himself to the ground, but looking at the slow motion replies, goalkeeper Gavin Bazunu's knee made contact with his left foot. This by the style might. United remain six points clear of fifth place to Newcastle United, who have a game in hand. The Red Devils face the Magpies on the road after the international break. David De Gea reacts after frustrating 0-0 draw with Southampton. Manchester United goalkeeper David De Gea believes that Casimiro was unlucky to get his marching orders against Southampton. At the half-hour mark, Casimiro was sent off just when United were trying to make inroads into the game. The midfielder first received a yellow card for his lunging tackle, but the referee swapped it with a red card after looking at the instance on the monitor. De Gea admitted that the red card was the defining moment of the game. He told via ManUnited.com, Before the game, we wanted to win three points, but the game changed when Casimiro got sent off. It was very tough, but I think the team did well. We defended, and then I think we had a couple of good chances to score a goal and win the game. At the end, we have taken the point, and it shows a great team spirit. How we fought to the end. The tackle was a normal tackle, but then he touched the ball, and the ball made his leg go a little higher, and he hit the player from Southampton. He was very unlucky. We suffered a bit. To play for 70 minutes with 10 players is tough, but like I say, we showed good team spirit, and we kept it trying till the end, and we nearly scored a goal. With United reduced to 10 men, De Gea had to endure a buzzier afternoon than he had imagined it before the kickoff. He pulled off a big reflex save from Theo Walcott midway through the first half. The former Arsenal forward ghosted past Luke Shaw to have the ball, but his strike went straight at the shot stopper. After a horror performance in the midweek against Real Betis, many eyes were on the Spanish goalkeeper yesterday. His ball distribution was appalling in the previous game often putting pressure on his teammates. His kicking was much better yesterday, which will be a relief for the 32-year-old Manchester United. Next, faces Real Betis at Benito Villamarin on Thursday night in the second leg of the Europa League last 16 tie. Luke Shaw puts an impressive performance versus Southampton. 
Manchester United defender Luke Shaw delivered an impressive performance during the club's goalless Premier League draw against Southampton on Sunday. The Red Devils started as favourites to pick up three points, but the complexion of the game changed after Casimiro was sent off in the 34th minute. United still managed to create chances on goal. Bruno Fernandes hit the woodwork while the Red Devils were denied two potential penalties in either half. Despite the stalemate, there were some positives to carry forward. David De Gea was back to his best in goal. After a couple of tough outings, he made two crucial saves. Meanwhile, the defense also stood up to the occasion. Shaw was impressive from left back. The England star had 81 touches of the ball against the Suns. He won four tackles, seven duels, while providing four key passes for his teammates in the final third. Shaw also completed 100% of his long balls and dribbles with three successful crosses. The 27-year-old had a difficult outing at Anfield last weekend. He was regularly overlapped by Mohamed Salah, while his positioning and decision-making was average. He redeemed himself in the midweek win over Real Betis in the Europa League and put in another top display against the Saints. He was almost flawless over 90 minutes. United will be back in action against Betis on Thursday evening. They will travel to Seville for the second leg of their Europa League round of 16 tie with a 4-1 advantage. Eric Ten Hag has the option to rest some of his regular starters, including Shaw in midweek. However, we won't be surprised if the Dutchman picks his strongest lineup again. Eric Ten Hag delivers verdict on Jaden Sancho performance versus Southampton. Manchester United manager Eric Ten Hag has given his backing to Jadon Sancho after the nil to nil draw with Southampton. Ten Hag selected Sancho as an attacking midfielder, along with Bruno Fernandes with Casimiro anchoring the midfield behind. This game plan was thrown out the window when Casimiro was sent off in the first half. Sancho played 73 minutes before coming off as part of a double change along with Anthony, with Facundo Pallestri and Alejandro Garnacho brought on. Eric Ten Hag was asked by reporters at his press conference if he was happy with Sancho's display. The Manchester United manager responded by giving his backing to the star. He said, Yes, I think he did quite well. Some really good actions. One time he was really close to a goal, a run behind the defensive line, a cross from Bruno almost came there. He did a really good job, I think he can make the difference. It's not bad when you have Casimiro, Bruno and Jaden Sancho. The trio is an experimental one, and proven as a midfield three together, and this first venture was cut short after just 34 minutes by the officials. Sancho's game was mixed, he struggled to make an impact, with no chances created and no shots at goal. United fans expect a little more, this was his first start in two and a half weeks, and he has not completed 90 minutes since his return. Only when he is playing 90 minutes regularly will United see the best of him, but he needs to give a little more first to give Ten Hag more reason to keep him on for the entire game. While the manager's words were positive for Sancho, his actions were different, substituting him off when United still needed a goal. Massive blow for Man United, with Casimiro set to miss four domestic games. Manchester United have been handed a massive blow with midfielder Casimiro, set to be suspended for the next four domestic games. The Red Devils played out a goalless draw against Southampton in the Premier League yesterday, and the game was largely dictated by Casimiro's early sending off. The Brazilian was handed his second red card of the campaign in 34th minute after a VAR review, and in our opinion, Anthony Tyler's decision was definitely dubious. Casimiro quite clearly got the ball before his studs made contact with Carlos Alcaraz's knee. It should not have been more than a yellow card, which was initially brandished. United have the option to lodge an appeal before the FA Cup quarter final against Fulham next weekend, but as things stand, the midfielder will be suspended for four domestic games. Casimiro will obviously play no part against the Cottagers next Sunday, but he will also be absent for the league matches against Newcastle United, Brantford and Everton. In our view, United should see out 
the threat of Fulham, Brentford and Everton at home, but the main challenge could be against the Magpies at St James Park on April 2. The tennis side outfit have lost just one game at home this campaign, and it could be a fixture where United face the potential threat of losing points. Hopefully, that's not the case. Meanwhile, Casimir will be available to face Real Betis in the second leg of the Europa League last 16 tie, but it remains to be seen whether manager Eric Ten Hag will start him. The 50 million euros rated star is a just one yellow card away from being suspended for the first leg of the Europa League quarter final. Hence, Ten Hag must think twice about picking him in the starting 11. Scott McTominay has to step up in Casimiro's absence. Casimiro received his second straight card in the Premier League yesterday as Manchester United played out a 0-0 draw with Southampton. If the Red Devils decide not to appeal against the red card, Casimiro will be forced to miss the next four domestic games as we mentioned before. This will be a massive blow for United as they do not have a like-for-like replacement for Casimiro. His absence will compel Eric Ten Hag to deploy Scott McTominay in the number 6 role. The 26-year-old replaced Wout Weghorst just before the break against Southampton as the manager sought stability after Casimiro's dismissal. With Bruno Fernandes playing in central midfield, United were slightly unbalanced from the kick-off. The red card incident only increased that liability. McTominay came into a difficult situation and helped his side to cover defensively. He provided more steel and tried to close the gaps which were created due to his teammates' expulsion. There is no comparison between the qualities of McTominay and Casimiro. But with the latter suspended for a while now, McTominay has a perfect chance to step up and show Ten Hag what he brings to the side. The academy graduate has had a mixed season. He started the campaign strongly, forcing Ten Hag to choose him over Casimiro, who just moved to Old Trafford. However, it was just a matter of time before the former Real Madrid star took his place at the center. McTominay's fine performance against Southampton might allow Ten Hag to trust the midfielder in the next few games. He completed 13 passes out of 16 attempted and won 10 duels. He helped to shore up the defense, making 4 tackles and 4 clearances. In the final few minutes of the game, he played a sampetious long pass to Facundo Pellestri to set up the winger for a counter-attack. There are doubts over his Man United future. Newcastle are reportedly interested in acquiring his services next summer. With Casimiro missing for the upcoming four domestic games, McTominay has a final chance to impress Ten Hag and salvage his United career. Manchester United register interest in Joao Palinha, who is also being tracked by Arsenal and Chelsea. Manchester United are aiming to snap up Joao Palinha in the upcoming transfer window, according to The Sun. Eric Ten Hag's men are one of six clubs keen on the midfielder alongside Chelsea, Arsenal, Newcastle United, Liverpool and Tottenham Hotspur. United were previously keen on landing Palinha during his time in Portuguese football, with the Red Devils believed to have sent scouts to watch him on several occasions. Since moving to West London last summer, Palinha has been a standout performer for Fulham and could soon be on the move away. However, Fulham manager Marco Silva has claimed that Palinha is happy with the club in a recent interview with The Athletic earlier this month. He said, He is happy here. It's the same with the players and managers. It's impossible to control what people write, whether it's managers or players are linked with the clubs, or if there is interest, to be honest, it's something that we don't lose time thinking about the situations, and with Joao, it's the same. The 27-year-old is entering his prime and should command a sizable fee next summer. A real force in the center of the park, Palinha has completed more tackles, 101, and won more duels, 191, than any other midfielder in the top tier of English football this season. However, 
His combative nature often sees him get booked as shown by his 10 yellow cards for which he is now serving a two-game suspension and last November's meeting between Fulham and Man United at Craven Cottage, Palinha completed nine tackles, the most of any player in a single Premier League game this term, with United and Fulham set to face off in the quarter-final of the FA Cup next Sunday, Palinha will be looking to serve up another reminder of his equality. I will be uploading daily Manchester United news, so keep your eyes on the channel and don't forget to like and subscribe. I appreciate your support. Peace out.